Hello friends, Patrick here. Today we are talking HDMI, which is High Definition Multimedia Interface. Now let's have a quick talk about what it is and then we're gonna get into the question that you've probably clicked on this video and that is what HDMI do you need today in the year 2009? Now HDMI is a proprietary audio and video interface for transmitting uncompressed video data and compressed or uncompressed digital audio data from an HDMI compliant source device such as a display controller to a compatible computer monitor, video projector, digital television or digital audio device. Um, basically, HDMI is a digital replacement for all analog video standards. So remember the red, white and yellow cables. So back in 2012, when the cable landscape was the Wild West, CNET came out with an article and I'll link that below. This was their headline. Expensive HDMI cables are a ripoff and offer no difference in picture quality over cheap ones. So when a salesman tries to upsell, politely tell him he's wrong and move on with the sale of your other item. And in 2012, they were absolutely correct. Now, however, the landscape has changed again and well, damn it, it should have because it's been six years and so it doesn't hold up anymore. Today, we are going to look at the current differences of HDMI cables, why you may need to buy a new one, but also still don't actually have to spend hundreds or thousands of dollars. So first off, let's quickly look back at cables back in 2012. They were sort of all the same. Most homes only had 1080p TVs or even monitor screens, and the HDMI cable didn't have to work too hard. Different manufacturing quality can have a slight effect on the ability to transmit the signal over long distances, let's say 25 meters or more. Better made cables may even last a little bit longer, especially if they're nicely braided. Now, better made doesn't actually mean more expensive no, no matter what. Though there is an absolutely no picture sound quality difference between a $3.50 cable and a $1,000 cable back in 2012. So, Obviously, does this hold up today? And the answer is a bit of a mixed bag. It's a yes and no. Distance is still an issue. However, there are now multiple standards of HDMI cables and we need to discuss each. Sometimes people don't really care about specific specifications of a cable. I mean, you just want it to plug it in and work. And as long as it looks like the cable that fits in that hole over there, it, it must fit. So let's quickly look back at version one. Now, HDMI one was released on December 2002, and it's been a while, hasn't it? These cables have been around for a long time. And it's a single cable digital audio video connector interface. The link architecture is based on DVI. So you remember those DVI ones you use for your monitors? And these use exactly the same video transmission format um, and sending audio and other auxiliary data during the blanking intervals of a video stream. It allows a data transfer of 4.9 gigabits uh, bandwidth per link, the same as a DVI. It could only do 1080p at 30 hertz or 1200p at 60 hertz and eight channels and 24 bit audio. And probably that last bit is the only meaningful bit. It could do 1080p at 30 hertz uh, and then you could lower the actual resolution was that P, 10, 1220p at 60. Now the interesting thing about the first one is that those two things were actually locked. You could either do that or that and it couldn't go lower. So then HDMI 1.1 came out in May 2004 and added support for DVD audio. And then we skipped to version 1.2 and that was released in August in 2005 and added the option of one bit audio and used super audio CDs at up to eight channels. And to make HDMI more suitable for use on PC devices, in addition, it added explicit support for several new formats, including 720p at 100 hertz and 120 hertz. And these are the refresh rates, how many times that image actually shows itself. And that was really good for PC gaming, for example, when you could use your HDMI cable to actually get higher refresh rates on a higher refresh rate monitor. And it relaxed the pixel format support requirements so that sources with only native RGB output, PC sources, would not be required to support YCBCR output, which is mainly for TV and uh, DVD and basically your devices that go from TV to projector. So later on, HDMI 1.2a was released on December uh, 2005 and it had the full specifics of all the previous ones, except it added something called Consumer Electric Control, CEC. And uh, we'll talk about that more in a little bit later because it actually only comes to fruition a few versions later. And so then HDMI 1.3 was released in June 2006 and increased the maximum to 1080p at 120 hertz and or 40, 40p at 60 hertz. 
It also optionally allowed output of Dolby True HD and DTS HD master audio streams for external decoding by AAD receivers. It incorporates automatic audio syncing and audio video sync capabilities. Now a little bit later HDMI 1.3a was released in November 2006. Now this allowed devices to speak to one another and control things like volume and on and off and that's actually part of that re-release of the CEC. Finally other brands have got onto it and started adding support for CEC. So HDMI 1.4 at this stage is the most popular HDMI cable as it could do almost everything in the next three to four years. And HDMI 1.4 was released in 2009 and also May. Now, HDMI 1.4 added support for 2K at 24 hertz, 4K at 30 hertz, and 1080p at 120 hertz, which meant some really amazing connections. It basically brought around 4K to the home. It also added a HDMI Ethernet channel, HEC, that accommodates a 100 megabits Ethernet connection between the two HDMI connected devices, so they can actually share an internet connection. It also introduced an audio return channel, which is called ARC, meaning you can have an external audio source connected via HDMI, and that would actually be able to speak to other devices that are connected on another HDMI channel and still have the audio come through that which was absolutely amazing and meant a lot less HDMI cables overall, but it also meant you could lose your whole system connected to your TV uh, through one cable and let other things connect to it and use that sound. So when you have a console or you have a DVD player, but you only have one sound system, you don't have to connect it all into this one sound system. It can go to the TV through this arc, back to the sound, and all of a sudden you've got this really nice ecosystem at home. Now, HDMI 1.4a was released on March 2010 and added two mandatory 3D formats for broadcast content, which was deferred with HDMI 1.4 pending the direction of the 3D broadcast market. And unfortunately, we don't really have any more 3D content at home. I know at one point there was a bunch of 3D TVs being sold. That's kind of just disappeared if you look back. So it's not really relevant. But then HDMI 1.4b was released in October 2011, containing only minor clarifications to the 1.4. For a documentation and all it did is just allow the latest use of the HDMI licensing um, and it's the last one before the future versions of the HDMI specification was produced by the HDMI forum which was created in October 2011. This is where CNET's article stops because we are entering a new generation of content and cables and the reason for my video. I hope you're still with me here. So HDMI 2.0, referred to by some manufacturers as HDMI UHD, was released on September 4th, 2013. Now, HDMI 2 increases the maximum bandwidth to 18 gigabits. Uh, this enables HDMI 2 to carry 4K video at 60 hertz, which is 60 frames with 24-bit color depth. Other features of HDMI 2 include support for uh, REC 2020 color space, up to 32 audio channels, uh, up to 1536 kilohertz audio sample frequency, dual video streams to multiple users on the same screen, up to four audio streams, four to zero chroma subsampling, 25 frames 3D formats, uh, support for 21 by nine aspect ratio, which is this ratio of this monitor right here, dynamic synchronization of video and audio streams, which basically means your mouth moving and your audio will never go out of sync, well, hopefully anyway, HEAAC and DRA audio standards, which is just expanding to more and more things that can work with your TV and improved 3D capabilities and additional CEC functions. Now, HDMI 2 had another revision called 2A and that was released in 2015 and added support for high dynamic range uh, and some static metadata. And then HDMI 2.0B was released in March 2016 with, again, minor upgrades. Now, HDMI 2.1 was officially announced by the HDM Forum on January 4th, 2017, and was released on November 2017. It adds support for higher resolutions and higher refresh rates, including 4K at 120 hertz, 8K at 120 hertz. Now, Unfortunately, it's not really useful just yet because we don't even have TVs that are 8K that are coming soon. They're gonna be in the tens of thousands. Now, HDMI 2.0 also introduced a new HDMI cable category called Ultra High Speed. And keep that in mind because we need to talk about it, which certifies cables as a new higher speed that these formats require. Ultra high HDMI cables are backwards compatible with older HDMI cables, something to really remember. 
and older cables are compatible with the HDMI 2.1 devices, though the full 48 gigabits bandwidth is not possible without the new cables. Maximum support resolution is 10K at 120 Hz. Dynamic HDR specifications are the same, but they now include scene by scene or even frame by frame basis. High frame rates are now included for all 4K, 8K, 10K, and enhanced audio return channel, which is ARC with the word enhanced in front of it, so it's eARC, uh, for object based audio formats such as Dolby Atmos, DTSX and variable refresh rates are going to be coming soon so that might be really good for consoles that are going to take uh, use of it so basically the refresh rate matches the game instead of having one set and you'll get glitches and screen tearing um, now there's a few more little bits and pieces quick media switching for movies eliminates the delay that can result in blank screens before content is displayed not that a lot of people suffered from it uh, quick frame transport will reduce latency okay so that's still a bunch of words that may not mean much to you. So I have broken down some key features that you can take advantage of now in your home. And I will point out that less than 1% of people can take advantage of the features of HDMI 2.1. So everything you just heard, you could potentially just ignore up to HDMI 2. So here is what to look out for in your TV and home theater setup to choose the right cables. Well, first of all, the potential resolution of your TV. Most TVs right now have a maximum one of 4K and they're actually quite affordable. There's also the ARC connected devices, for example, your sound bars. There's also HDR10 color reproduction, which basically means better colors and much truer to life, depending on how your TV presents it. A QLED, an OLED obviously has much better quality of those you know, deeper blacks, whiter whites, and obviously high refresh rates, so 200 hertz sports modes on some TVs, uh, you will need a better cable. Now it's not that hard to manage this, and most of the time it's going to be a choice between HDMI 1.4a, or 1.4, and 2. You will have 1.4 cables lying around the house, but they may not do the job if you've just bought a new TV. But it's very simple. So, if you want 4K at 60 hertz with HDR and sports mode, high refresh rate, then you will need to get HDMI 2.0 minimum. If you don't have a 4K TV, you don't need to go out and buy a whole new set of cables. 1.4a and b will do for all your needs. And most of the ones you have at home are that already, unless you've had them for a while. So this one, for example, as you can see, it's actually cut is a 1.2. This cannot work with something like ARC. It will not push the sound through. This, on the other hand, is a 2.0, and it's a much thicker cable, as you can see. It's not fancy, it's still plastic. This can work with everything, 4K, 60 Hertz, 10, 10-bit 10 colors, HDR, etc., etc. And here is the premium cable, which has got a metal housing, and it's got a braided cable. It's a little bit stronger and this one is 2.1. So, if you want to connect your soundbar in ARC so the TV controls its own sound and so you have only, let's say, one remote, then you will need to grab a 2.0 or a 1.4b. But due to the naming conventions, it's still easier to find a 2.0 cable at this stage. This is also mean that the best compatibility with that cable, it, it won't really matter for the devices you have. You might as well go for the two because it's just not gonna change anything else. You'll just have compatibility. So what to buy and where? So the idea from CNET is still stands. You don't need to spend hundreds on cables. You don't wanna buy from shops like Harvey Norman's, Good Guys or JB Hi-Fi as the markup on those cables is insane. Best places to get a cable at the moment is Amazon AU, priced between $10 to $50 depending on the length. You can purchase UHD HDMI 2.0 cables nicely braided with solid pins. And this is this one here. This cost $10. It's a meter. Sure, it's, it's a very short one, but I only needed a meter and I don't want too many cables hanging around. But you can go up to $20 for two, three meters and so on. These are very cheap and these are the best you can get right now. So you don't spend $60 on cables. I mean, you, you don't need to. $15 will do fine. I will put a link below for what I bought. And by the way, I don't have an Amazon affiliate, so feel free to also search Amazon on your own. Just search for HDMI 2.0. And with Prime, it's, it's obviously free shipping. So between these two cables, the price difference is about 50%. This is 
$6 I think with delivery and this was $10 with delivery. Obviously they look a little bit different but they still do the job very, very well. So what I'm gonna point out to you guys is that yes, you can probably get away with uh, HDMI 1.4 with most things and most things will work. But if you are finding that you're not able to connect some bits and pieces like HDR10 if you wanna use it and to be honest, you won't really notice it because it's that, not that much content yet that uses it, but there is 4K content. And again, most content is at 24 Hertz. So you might not even need this cable because this can do 60, but you won't need it. There's also the actual color gamut, which is 4220 or 4222. In any case, whatever one it is, you might need a better cable, but your TV also has to support it. So there's no point buying more expensive HDMI cables if your TV does not support it. So basically at the end of the day, if you want HDR10, you've got 4K at 60 Hertz, you want all that cool stuff, you will probably need to fork out for an HDMI 2.0 and it's not expensive. Guys, thank you very much for watching. I hope it's been a little bit helpful. I know it's a bit of a longer video uh, and a little bit uh, daunting looking at these, but it's not too complicated just yet. In the future, we'll probably get more and more complicated. So I'll probably do an update video. Guys, thank you very much for watching. Like, subscribe. Let me know what you think below. Um, are you guys using HDMI 2.0 cables? Let me know. Or if you're getting away with some older cables. Um, interestingly enough, Xbox One S would not work with a 1.4 cable uh, at a 4K resolution at 30 hertz. Uh, so that's something to note. It's very picky. Microsoft is very picky with it. Guys, thank you very much for watching. And I'll catch you in another video.